Let's ultrasound! On today's edition of Breast Ultrasound, we'll explore accessory breast tissue versus the axillary tail of Spence. To truly understand accessory breast tissue versus the axillary telospence, we have to look back to the embryology of the breast. In weeks five to six, streaks develop from the axilla to the groin and evolve into what we call mammary ridges, known as the milk lines. And later during weeks six to eight, most of the bilateral mammary ridges atrophy, except in the pectoral region of the chest. And this will be the future site of the breast buds. The milk lines are two lines or ridges that develop in the embryo, which extend from the axilla to the groin. Extra areas of glandular breast tissue, known as accessory breast tissue, these are patches of glandular tissue, can occur anywhere along the milk lines, anywhere that the milk lines failed to atrophy in the fetus. Supernumerary or extra nipples can also occur anywhere along the milk lines, and this can happen in both females and males. Let's talk about the differences between the axilla tail of spence and accessory breast tissue. The axillary tail of spence is the normal extension of glandular tissue into the lower axilla. And this is tissue that's glandular tissue and it's contiguous or connected to the upper outer quadrant breast tissue. The axillary tail tissue is located deeper on the ultrasound image than accessory breast tissue. It's below the subcutaneous fat layer. Accessory breast tissue is a developmental anomaly in which one or more areas along the milk line fails to atrophy in the embryo. And accessory breast tissue can be located anywhere along the milk lines, from the axilla all the way down to the groin. And this tissue is located superficially on the ultrasound. It's anterior or above the subcutaneous fat layer and just below the skin line. Now let's dive in a little bit deeper and talk about accessory breast tissue. So this is a developmental anomaly and it's when that milk line fails to atrophy in one or more areas. Note that the milk lines should atrophy everywhere from the axilla to the groin except for in the area of the chest where the breast will form. And anywhere it fails to atrophy results in a patch of extraneous or accessory, this is also known as extra breast tissue, and it's breast glandular tissue. And this patch of accessory breast tissue can be located or found anywhere along the milk lines. So in the axilla, the abdomen, the groin, the most common location is in the axilla. And this tissue is hormonally responsive tissue. So it often will swell and become palpable or painful during puberty, menses, pregnancy, breastfeeding, or when taking HRT. This is hormone replacement therapy. It's really important and really crucial to understand that this can occur in both males and females, and that only a small percentage of females or males have accessory breast tissue. This does not occur in everyone. The ultrasound appearance of accessory breast tissue is a hyperechoic pattern of tissue. It may or may not have visible anechoic milk ducts within it. It's going to be located very superficially on the ultrasound image, just below the skin line, and it's going to be anterior to the subcutaneous fat layer. And it's distinguishable from the axillary telespence tissue by its depth on the image, it's more superficial, and also its location. It's a separate patch of tissue by itself, and it's not connected to the upper outer quadrant breast tissue. Accessory breast tissue can be very variable in size. It can be as small as a dime. I've seen it as small as a pea even, or it can be quite large where it actually bulges out of the skin. The axillary tail of Spence is the normal extension of glandular tissue into the axilla. All women have an axillary tail of Spence. This is a normal part of the breast and axilla anatomy. The ultrasound appearance is going to be a hyperechoic patch of glandular tissue that is going to be contiguous or connected to the upper outer quadrant glandular tissue. You'll know it's the axillary tail of Spence because this tissue just continues on up into the lower axillary region. And you'll also know it's the axillary tail of Spence by its depth on the ultrasound image. The axillary tail of Spence tissue is located below the subcutaneous fat layer and anterior to the pectoralis muscles, just like normal glandular tissue. So when you encounter glandular breast tissue in the axilla, the question to ask yourself first of all is, number one, is it connected to the upper outer quadrant tissue? If it is, it's the axillary telespence. If it's a separate patch of tissue not connected to the upper outer quadrant tissue, then it's accessory tissue. The second question to ask yourself is, what is its depth on the ultrasound image? 
inch. The axillary telespence tissue is going to be located at the same depth as the normal breast glandular tissue. It's going to be located below the subcutaneous fat layer and anterior to the pectoralis muscles. While accessory breast tissue is going to be very superficially located on the ultrasound image, it's going to be directly below the skin line and it's going to be above or anterior to the subcutaneous fat layer. Here's a diagram that tries to illustrate the difference between accessory breast tissue and the axillary tail of spence. The axillary tail of spence is gonna be normal glandular tissue that extends into the lower axilla. And this tissue is going to be connected to the glandular tissue that's located in the upper outer quadrant. And this tissue lies deeper in the body than the accessory breast tissue. While accessory breast tissue most of the time is higher up in the axilla than the axillary tail of spence. And this tissue is not connected to the glandular tissue of the upper outer quadrant. And this tissue lies more superficial on the ultrasound image than the axillary tail spence tissue. However, this accessory breast tissue can be found anywhere along the milk lines. So you may find it down lower in the axilla in the location the axillary tail spence is found, but you'll recognize it because it's not connected directly to that axillary tail spence or upper outer quadrant tissue, and it will be more superficial on the ultrasound image. And you can also find this accessory breast tissue anywhere along the milk lines. So you may find it in the abdomen. It's going to be a superficial patch of white glandular tissue. Or you may even find it down in the groin with the same ultrasound appearance, a superficial patch of white glandular tissue. And sometimes it will also have a supernumerary or accessory nipple associated with this tissue. Here are three ultrasound images demonstrating the ultrasound appearance of the axillary tail of Spence. You'll note that this white hyperechoic glandular tissue patch is located posterior to the subcutaneous fat layer. It's located anterior to the pectoralis muscles. It does not connect to the skin line and this tissue is contiguous with the upper outer quadrant breast tissue. Here are three ultrasound images demonstrating the appearance of accessory breast tissue. This is going to be hyperechoic glandular tissue. It's going to be a patch of tissue that's off by itself. It is not going to be contiguous with or connected to the upper outer quadrant breast tissue. It's gonna be located very superficial on the ultrasound image and located just below the skin line and anterior or above the subcutaneous fat layer. Let's talk about the axial axillary telespence and breast pathology. The axillary telespence is a patch of glandular tissue that extends into the low axilla and this tissue is going to be contiguous with the upper outer quadrant breast tissue. And since this is glandular tissue, just like the glandular tissue of the breast, this tissue should always be carefully interrogated whenever the upper outer quadrant breast is evaluated because pathology such as cancer can develop in this tissue. So you should scan the upper outer quadrant of the breast and then just ensure sure that you travel up into the lower axilla and cover that little tail of extended tissue that travels into that low axilla. And this tissue is going to be deeper on the ultrasound image than accessory breast tissue would be, below the subcutaneous fat, just like normal glandular tissue. All females have this axillary tail of spence tissue, so it's important to evaluate it in every single patient in which you evaluate the upper outer quadrant of the breast. And you would document anything you find hiding in this tissue just like you would any other breast pathology. You document it in two planes, with and without measurements, and with and without color Doppler. There's no need to specifically document the patch of axillary telespence tissue itself because this is considered a normal anatomical finding of the breast. Now let's talk about accessory breast tissue and breast pathology. Since accessory breast tissue is glandular tissue, it can contain or develop anything that the breast glandular tissue can contain, such as simple cysts, complicated cysts, a complex mass, milk ducts, solid masses, and cancer. Since this is a developmental anomaly, only a small percentage of women are going to have accessory breast tissue. When you find a patch of accessory breast tissue, you need to document two things. Number one, you need to document the patch of accessory breast tissue because that in itself is an anomaly since most females do not 
not have this patch of tissue. And secondly, you need to demonstrate any pathology within that patch of accessory breast tissue. The ultrasound appearance of a mass in the accessory breast tissue is going to be highly variable depending on what type of mass is located in that tissue. The patch of tissue itself is going to be hyperechoic, superficially located patch of glandular tissue, which is anterior to the subcutaneous fat and directly below the skin line. And that patch of hyperechoic tissue is going to be visualized around the mass. And it's important to note that that accessory patch of tissue is not going to be connected to the upper outer quadrant breast tissue or the axillary tail of Spence tissue. It's going to be a separate island of tissue off by itself located more superficially on the ultrasound image. When you visualize pathology within the accessory breast tissue, the patch of accessory breast tissue itself should be imaged in two transducer planes with and without measurements of that accessory breast tissue patch with and without color Doppler because this in itself is an anomaly on the ultrasound. Secondly, any masses within that accessory breast tissue should be imaged in two transducer planes with and without measurements and with and without color Doppler. Next, it's important to characterize the mass. Unless any masses found within the accessory breast tissue are clearly benign, such as the BIRADS2 category, lymph nodes in the axilla should also be carefully interrogated simply due to their close proximity to the mass. 